Hello fellow unicorns, welcome to another video and this is usually what, what you see on my videos but today's video is dedicated to what goes behind the scenes so what goes behind the entire setup including the links I will be providing in the description about all the exact models of the equipment I'm using including the equipment I am using for traditional and digital art and of course I will be going through everything in as many details as possible so first of all let's start with the equipment uh, I know a lot of you don't have too many funds to buy some expensive gear so I'll be going through everything I use now and everything I used to use early on when I didn't have enough funds and of course I will be giving you guys advice on where to buy this stuff how much it's uh, like how much it costs and stuff like that so this is something that has saved my professional career as you know my voice isn't the pretty princess kind so I needed professional audio equipment to make everything sound a little bit more acceptable I'm currently using my phone to record this and I have attached a Rode Mini uh, microphone on it so I'm not currently using my uh, blue snowball but as you can see this is uh, kind of a cheapish option of professional audio gear it costs around 50 bucks I have linked it down below for you guys so every professional artist knows that Drawing on a plain uh, desk is not enough. What you guys need, I'll try to go in this mechanism. Well, I'm gonna just rip off this base and reveal my extra dusty interior, which is a generic laptop cooling holder. It's like so generic, it doesn't contain any cooling pads or fans or anything like that. It only serves the purpose of holding this plank. Sorry about that. I am recording and holding everything in place. So this cooling pad is so generic, you can buy it anywhere for dirt cheap and you can use it to get your art like tilted so you can reach it better because when you record videos uh, your video uh, well your drawing will look elongated if you don't draw under a certain tilted base I guess because the camera up above that's recording all of your stuff will be recording your drawing perfectly but you will be seeing your drawing like this and that's not good for you so you always need to get uh, some sort of a tilted mechanism or setup or maybe just a few planks or books under your base for your drawings. This is very important. I have made several videos in my earlier <laughs> YouTube career where I was literally, literally making um, elongated drawings and I didn't know what was wrong. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, next piece of equipment is this screen. Uh, a good screen is something you will need if you do digital art because proper screens, personally I recommend Dell, Dell is a fantastic brand, I recommend Dell uh, because they have very very professional uh, screens for digital artists and graphic designers, it, this type of screen shows your colors correctly and it's calibrated very well digital art. I'm using my very very old Wacom. As you can see it's not very big compared to my drawing. It's a very small tablet and it's a very old tablet. This tablet is like I think around seven years old but it's been working wonders for me but any type of cheap Wacom or bamboo tablet is recommended. Trust me there isn't that big of a difference because they do not they do not contain a screen but trust me you don't need a screen especially since the latest models of drawing tablets have been proven to have very hazardous screens and they can damage your eyes uh, one more personal advice from me to you if you want to prevent deteriorating eyesight make sure to grab yourself one of these 
these are the glasses you see me wearing every day but these are not just for show they do not contain any prescription they are serving only one purpose and that's to kill white and blue light that is eating out your eyes and this as you can see maybe I can even record this when you see your screen through these glasses everything looks a little bit more yellow and that's good that will help your eyesight prevent being deteriorated through time and prolonged use of big flashy screens because your eyesight will be damaged if you do not protect it on time so beware of that um, this is my Wacom pen it's old it's used up it has this nib which is changeable and you can definitely um, get diverse ones in the set when you buy your own tablet but you don't have to it's not that mandatory and this is a piece of equipment that can help you a lot this is a tattoo artist tracing table I have linked it down below in the description for you guys um, it costs only 20 bucks and if you're trying to do some artwork and you're scared of doing line arts uh, and erasing your precious sketches you can do it by using one of these they are very uh, affordable and long-lasting and just practical when you want to have many artworks done from the same sketch maybe test out different colors and still preserve the original sketch I think I have explained a lot in my line art tutorials the other uses of the light table of course one important side note never please never trace other people's art by using this th this light box this is not how real artists do this is considered something wrong and something that will not help you uh, improve your art okay so as for cheap equipment I have found this gem with my assistant Marina this thing is like dirt cheap and you can buy it in like well I have linked it down below but you can buy it in any local China um, China origin <laughs> merchandise shop I guess it has a little clasp here this clasp can hold any type of phone if you're recording your videos art videos with your phone this can also hold any type of web camera I have tested it out and as you can see it has this long very 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 firm um, hand here you can switch and shift any to any angle you need or like you can hook it up with this clasp here to the edge of your table I'm hooking it up to the edge of my shelf because this way when I tilt my table or move stuff on my table the camera won't be shaken up so that's one thing also this entire rig was made by my father um, I used to improvise a lot during the years combining like duct taping stuff to different stuff and just basing everything off of my shelf and just oh it was hell but still like improvisation is the key I guess so to get to where I am now I went through a lot of trouble and a lot of trouble for my dad but yeah but if I had this in the beginning I would have so much less stress in my life so I recommend you guys get this this is brilliant and thanks to Marsha she introduced us she's one of my students she introduced us to this particular gadget and yeah I have a lot of different like post-its and stickers and stuff I need to remember my schedules uh, I have this ring light and uh, it's okay but I kind of figured it was useless in the end uh, because uh, you always realize you need some sort of a light source and for a light source you will see that I have these two these two reflectors these are LED reflectors and if I have to uh, use some very nice strong lighting I actually diffuse these by pointing them up into my white shelf 
and the light is reflecting off of the white shelf down on my artwork and that's how I figured out the perfect lighting also the lighting doesn't even like um, depend on your light source it depends on the type of camera you're using I have also linked my main camera here uh, this is a professional camera and it does cost pretty penny but my personal suggestion is when you get this camera you don't have to use anything else I have been using a DSLR camera which is like expensive as hell in combination with the ring light and I realized it's more of a hassle than anything else so I quit using that and I'm using my DSLR only for photography and I have this little thing um, this is a very cheap camera you can use any Logitech cheap camera for if you want to start live streaming on Twitch I need to use this one to record my face and this one to record my artwork here so yeah I'm sticking to this combination of stuff and I'm pretty satisfied currently so let's get to the other part uh, of my desk I recently did a lot of um, let me just take this I recently decided to just take a box and put all of my most used art supplies in this box also speaking of electronics uh, for my main computer which is like covered in dust and all icky I have decided to get a uh, two terabyte memory this is very practical because you can store your videos and recordings and everything on this in a very very huge amount I don't I think this has become a part of everybody's household currently and yeah so let's get back to the traditional art supplies here so yeah I have a link to you guys my favorite art supplies which are the white jelly roll and Futaya Kukuretake uh, double-sided ink pen I love these two these two are my favorites currently and um, I have this one which I couldn't find the link for on Amazon it's graph master acrylic paint white paint and I actually used it to paint the snow effect this is like literally a white marker and it's definitely like these three are my favorites and graph master as a brand is a brand new brand but they are very 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 high quality so about the other stuff I frequently use I always need duct tape I use my feather duster I use a lot of post-its because I need a lot of lists and a lot of reminders and yeah I have a lot of different fine liners and markers just to do line arts with so yeah, that's kind of it yeah and I have already linked you guys my favorite pencil and my favorite fine liner so you guys can order these if you're interested and I have linked to you guys my favorite set of watercolors and these are Winsor Newton um, travel watercolors these are pigmented these are beautiful uh, but I also do have this more expensive um, brand of watercolors it's big it's highly pigmented and I really really like it and I have this baby this is my currently my most favorite uh, sketchbook for watercolors it's 300 grams thick and it's made out of cotton so all of the colors pop so vibrantly on this paper it's like I, I can't even compare it to other types speaking of other types of papers I have a lot of different sizes and thicknesses of watercolor paper and Copic papers because I really need a variety of papers for me to work on yeah and I have a hornless unicorn duct tape let me just <laughs> I'll, I'll show you my unicorn collection later so I have so many different types of papers some of them I haven't even um, tested out yet I bought this recycled uh, thin sketchbook it's made out of 100% bamboo so I wanted to test it out because bamboo is one of the most ecological resources ever then this is the one I use for watercolors the most by Fabriano and 
for coat picks there is this very obscure brand it's called blue pad I buy it in Vienna mostly and it's 170 gram thick and it's very smooth it's so smooth I use it for Copics and sketches and as you can see I bought a ton of them I bought them in A4 which is like kind of a letter in American sizes and half of that which is A5 as for other stuff on my shelves I have a lot of binders I actually these are like display books and I have linked to you guys this sort of display book because these are the best way to store your art these are some of my very 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 old comics like when I was still in um, college yeah so this is the best way to preserve your art because they have many plastic pockets you can use to keep your art in and your art will not fade it will stay sorted nicely i have several i have several of these for each project i have of course i have some traditional um different sketchbooks and I have my mailing center here because this is where I pack all of my art I need to send out or when I sell my art at conventions I need to wrap my posters in this plastic sheets and definitely one of my most prized parts of my art station is this shelf this was also made and invented by my dad he decided to make a box well kind of a frame from wood and then he used a PVC pipe and just cut it into pieces for me to um, put my pencils and pens and inkers and fine liners and markers and refills so what I did is like here we have that famous gold palette and under that I store some of my inking pens and nibs and brushes and some of the new pro markers so I have I have actually divided markers into brands or types of um, colors so for Copics which I have the most of thanks to my good friend Laura um, I have divided them into like warm colors, cold colors, refills, um, I even divided them by type and of course skin colors and here in this corner I have like thick black markers and calligraphy markers and stuff I have collected during my travels and here we have like a lot of fine liners so these are like one of my definitely most important pieces of art supplies and what else can I show you guys oh yeah and of course Copics I prefer to have Cop Copics close by especially the types of Copics that I use often and I use them in two different Copic cases I bought these and stores specializing in Copics. I think I bought this one in Romania and I bought this in Vienna or something like that. I don't remember. But yeah, this one is, uh, you can roll it up and you can carry it with you. So it's very practical, but I can literally store only skin tones in this one. And this one you can close up or you can use as a self-standing option. And I use these two for almost all my works because I can transport them easily and work even if I'm not in my um, workplace so I can literally carry it with me and these I still haven't tested enough these are very expensive like ridiculously expensive and I still need to learn how to work with them to prevent myself from using them up I bought this type of palette which can contain liquid ink and allow me to use it and it won't like evaporate and I can still use it and keep it so because trust me these are so ridiculously expensive and this is that old set I made a video on 
it's um, 90 maybe from the 30s or 40s or 50s I don't know um, watercolor set and it still works and I was pretty 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 impressed by it and yeah um, I can always give you guys a suggestion on you should always maybe try to go to a local like cheap plastic store and get yourself one of these very practical for a beginning artist and as for my unicorn and stuff collection I have gotten all of these throughout the years from various friends around the world I have collect I am an avid collectioner like I am seriously obsessed with art books and fashion books of course especially if those are Asian fashion books and magazines and resource books and pop culture Japanese books and these are some of my own books so um, all, as you can as you already know I have my book in Serbian I have my book in English and I have my book in Chinese isn't this weird let me let me just me so yeah everything I did in my first book but in Chinese this is just weird yeah and next to my own book I actually uh, have this this will be probably translated into many other languages soon enough this is a project I did with um, a local teacher that teaches Japanese in our biggest language school in Serbia and this is an official school book for learning Japanese in all of the schools in Serbia so I'm very proud of this project it's it's a very successful project and what else what else what else um, this is the workbook for my students some magazines I got featured in as an artist um, what else I have this this is my international greeting card as an illustrator and as a cosplayer. I was featured as a cosplayer in Japanese magazines too. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. As you can see, I'm just a little bit obsessed with unicorns and a little bit obsessed with Japan and um, Alice in Wonderland. So yeah, <laughs> it's just something. I have been collecting or got got as gifts throughout the years and I have this little dusty part here with more books and more figurines but it's so dusty I don't want to show it so yeah thank you guys so much for watching and if you guys have any questions about certain equipment you want to use or where to get it or any types of tips or tricks for art supplies Make sure to leave a comment down below and I will make sure to reply. Thank you guys so much and see you guys next time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you want to learn how to draw manga, check out my book Manga Crash Course available in English, French, Serbian and Chinese.